William Frank Majofsky, uh, go by Bill. Uh, I come from a military family. Um, all my brothers, we all served. We were all in the, my uncle was in the Canadian Guards. My father was a partisan during the war with the, the Czech, Czech and Russians. And then he served in the French Foreign Legion in Algiers. So we, we grew up to it. We all were in sea cadets and then, you know, just duty and stuff. So, you know, we grew up to it. Yeah. I enlisted January 10th, 1973. I was 17. I enlisted into the Navy, and later on I had remustered to the Army. At 17, I didn't have to have my parents sign, but you had to have a, 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 a letter from the Chief of Police and stuff like that and from the town that you were, you know, good standing and all that kind of stuff. You, uh, at one time, you could be 15 and boy soldier. School was boring to me. I ended up going back to school later in life. I wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world embark on life. Well, I came home one day and my father said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I don't know. I think I'm going to sit around here and uh, until I figure out what I'm going to do. And my dad said, no, uh, little birdie wants to spread his wings. Little birdie's going to find his own nest. And I said, well, I'll join the military. And he, a push, I guess, in the right direction. Our boot camp was, was interesting. It was, uh, camp was hard. It was uh, the discipline. Um, it was life-changing. And you, you learned how to do teamwork, how to c c care with people and everything. And, and discipline was just, you know, discipline was everything. You know, from the time you got that haircut and uh, you couldn't even recognize the guys beside you that you were, you were standing outside with before you went in. So back then in the early 70s, everybody had long hair. And, well, I was smart enough to cut it before I, I went to boot camp. Uh, Cornwallis, I went to trade course in Borden. I signed up. I wanted to get into Perry, which was a personal uh, physical education recreational instructor. It was a closed trade. You couldn't get in as, as off the street. So they put me as a cook, and they said, you know, you go as a cook. Once this opens up, we'll, we'll transfer you. That's, that's great. So I was a cook, and then when time came for me to get into Perry, they reneged on it. So after the Olympics in 76, I got an honorable discharge. But I was, uh, I went from Borden to, I, I was posted to the Wolseley Barracks, and I was with the first RCR, one RCR, and I did pretty well my, my three and a half years with the, uh, with the RCR. In uh, 74, I went to uh, Egypt, and uh, after the Von Kipper War, and I, was, I went over there for six months. I was in the Ismailia and everything when the uh, the buffalo was shot down, when the uh, Syrians shot down the missile, shot down the buffalo, and nine Canadian soldiers were killed. It was the biggest at that time of Canadian soldier peacekeeping Canadians that were, were killed. And uh, I did six months there, and I was in the desert. I was in Rabah in, in an outpost, and that basically the Canadians were logistics over there. They were doing uh, communications, uh, um, transportation, and medical. And that's so why I did six months there. I came home. I was home, I think, a couple months. And in December of 74, I went to uh, Cyprus. And the island had just been invaded. The Airborne Regiment was in, the, was in Cyprus. And we relieved them. And uh, so then we were doing peacekeeping there. And I was uh, at, in Nicosia. And I was at Maple Leaf Manor. And then I was at Cronenberg and Outpost. I was there for a while. And there we did patrols. And we did, I, I did everything with the, with the infantry unit. I went out with them in that and uh, did outposts, uh, did patrols and stuff. It was uh, six months there. I, got, uh, I went AWOL from uh, when, they, when they didn't uh, wouldn't give me the Perry job. So I was charged with that. And I had an exemplary record. And uh, the, the major was kind of upset that I did that. And he, so he gave me a, a, a small fine. And then I had to do some some duties and another time I swore at a sergeant so at right. that time I got like I forget how many weekends in a row where I had to do duties and that you know you're marched in in front of the commanding officer and you're charged under the military act for what you did in sport nation you'll do about uh, 15 right turns left turns everything before you're going and it's just quick they just and then I said I'm a firm believer I taught high school for 10 years I went on the police force for a bit and uh if you quit school, I think you should automatically go into the military. I don't care if it's the Air Force, Navy, Army, whatever. I think you should do, have to do a three-year stint. If somebody wants to go back to school, once they're done, when they realize at a certain age, you decide, okay, like, like for me, it was, uh, I was 29 when I went back to high school, 30 when I went to university. So, like, you know, some people just, you know, later in life, they decide to change things in their life. And... I don't have much regrets in life. If I had to change something, I would have stayed in school, finished high school, went to university first, I would have came out, I would have still joined the, the service, I would have went in as an officer.
It's jumping out of planes. Out of my military career, that was one of the most, to me, was the most exciting times. It's a rush. It's an absolute rush. You know, you've got all that equipment on you. You've got all that, that the size of those planes. Like, I've done civilian jumps, too. Nothing compared to military jumps. Total different ball game. I learned that I could do things, that I, um, not to be a quitter. Circumstances, I learned about leadership. I learned about, uh, you know, dealing with people, good or bad. Or, you know, it made me tougher. When I, you know, you went in, like I say, 17 years old. I, I thought I was, you know, something else. But after you're done basic training, after you're done your, your TQ3, your, your, your trade course, or whatever your, your qualifications at pay level three, then you go to a, a regimen, you can live off base, you can live on base. If it's something that was good, you know. Meals were great, and, like, and you talk to most military guys, they'll tell you the meals are number one. The government gives the best. The opportunities are, are immense. As everybody that's in the military is a soldier first. Infantry is the ground unit. Okay? They're the first that will come in will be the infantry units. Okay? The other ones are supporting trades. Everything around supports the infantry. That. So it doesn't matter what your trade is, you're qualified, you're a soldier first. Firefighter. You might be going to a plumber. You might be going to an electrician, a mechanic, Remy. You go into Remy. You know, there's all there's so many trades. Like uh, you might go into a radar. You might even remuster into a, a different uh, a branch of the service, Navy or Air Force, wherever that trade is. World War uh, Two veterans are far and few between. You know, the Korean veterans, war veterans, they're far and few between. Your Afghan vets, your peacekeeping vets, it's a, it's a, it's like a rite of passage. Times are changing, and and with that, everything changes. Everything. Stolen valor is people who say they had military careers, and they didn't, and they say they were awarded medals that they didn't. It's wrong. Absolutely. It's wrong. They're trying to, you know, to take something that they never earned. I'm proud of my service. I'm proud of serving my country. Um, I'm, I'm proud of my friends that have served. Like, the camaraderie is so thick. It's always there. The Legion does for vets and stuff, and even ourselves. The younger guys, we don't look at ourselves as a... We're veterans, but we don't, you know, we don't really look at it. And it's not until, like, Les said, like, you know, geez, guys, we're, we, we should be going to these things, too, and everything. And he said, you know what, you're right. You're absolutely right. We should be, uh, you know, because, at the, the, like I said earlier, the, the times are changing. At Le least we forget. Um, I don't think always. Understand. Always.